God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. Tell your neighbor, God loves me. Tell them again with confidence. God loves me. Tell them with an attitude. Hallelujah. Let's give God a big hand. Amen. Amen. We want to read God's word today from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. This month is a month of authorizing faith, and we have a few amazing lessons that God has placed for us. So this is an amazing scripture which we turn to from time to time. The Bible says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. Highly favored. Highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants for a few days. Forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Verse 38 I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is God's word and God's people say, Amen. Amen. We may be seated. As you get seated, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're looking good. Better than yesterday. <coughs> and tomorrow. Even though I don't see you. You will shine. In Jesus name. Meta meta. Sparkle sparkle. Shiny shiny. Wear shades. Amen. By the way, I saw a verse in the Bible that talks about sparkle sparkle. Hello. Now the verse for Meta Meta, you may not find it, but if you're if you're reading in the Greek Bible, it says in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, uh, it says, Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That word transformed comes from the Greek word metamorphosis. Hello, Meta, morph, metamorphosis. And morph means a form. Meta means to change. Hallelujah. Shiny, shiny, you know where that verse comes from? Arise on. For your light has. Amen. We want to welcome those watching us online, wherever they are, and we want to thank God that we are starting an amazing week. Tell your neighbor, it is an amazing week. Just again, a reminder, on Saturday, 
we have the discipleship conference Saturday and uh, we are here with partnership with Nairobi Baptist right here uh, talking about discipleship and especially emphasis to the families and we believe that families can be disciples sometimes when we talk about discipleship we talk about individual people but we are talking about families being discipled and so we are getting up for that and you're so welcome on Friday, we have what we call the Mizpah, the Mizpah Conference, Friday. Hello. And that will be happening uh, in the tent. But like you've been told, the men's week, starting on Wednesday, Wednesday we have our prayer service, but starting on that day, and uh, the ladies are welcome for that day, hallelujah, when we'll be talking about uh, the man as a king, Hallelujah. The man is a king. So we are gearing up an amazing week. And then Sunday we have Father's, Father's Day. We are celebrating the fathers in the house. The, the fathers all over this continent, all over the globe, want to celebrate families in Jesus' mighty name. And so we have an amazing week. Please pray for us, those who are preparing to preach, those who are preparing to lead. And so just keep praying for us that God will use us. This morning, Pastor Washira <clears throat> was on Citizen TV uh, on that program called Rauka. Hallelujah. Rauka is a Hebrew word that means uh, what? rise in the morning, you wake up. Now, because they had asked me to go, and you know, waking up early in the morning is a problem for some of us. Thank you, Jesus. We sent Pastor Washira, and Pastor Washira did a uh, fantastic job, and Pastor Washira, if you're watching us online, we salute you, we thank God for you, uh, for representing us there. We also want to thank God for Kambua, who is one of our members, uh, who was hosting that program. We also want to tell Kambua, wherever you are, thank you for giving us that, giving us that opportunity to share in that morning program. So tell your neighbor, Parklands is positioned amazingly. Amen. So let us pray as I prepare to share this word to us. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that something good is about to happen to us. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. Lord, we have entered the month of June, and we believe that June is an amazing month. And dear Lord, uh, many revelations will come this month. As you give us the direction we need to go as we serve you. Master, again, we say thank you for those in the pavilion, those in watching us online, wherever they are, all over the world, in Australia, uh, in Finland, in the United States of America, uh, in many continents in Africa, wherever they are, Gabon, South Africa, Congo, wherever they are, we bless them even as they hear your word today. And Lord, we pray that even for us who are here, that, Lord, we shall connect to your word because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so may your anointing be upon your servant uh, even as he opens his mouth. The Lord, it will be about God and about the victory that we have. So we bless you and we thank you because we have prayed in Jesus' name and God's people say, Amen. tell your neighbor, authorizing faith. And so we want to explain it so that, again, you don't uh, confuse about what we mean by authorizing faith. This entire year, we are talking about the, Lord, the year of the Lord's ever-increasing faith, ever-increasing faith. And so we are ever-increasing, January, February, March, April, ever-increasing. Let me read this verse, Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6, uh, which is also one of our key verses this year, so it is a reminder for us. The Bible says, the apostles say to the Lord, increase what? Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Jesus replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Another verse in the book of Mark, Chapter 11, verse 23, again, Jesus is speaking to the disciples and teaching them. He says, truly, I tell you, 
If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. We are talking about authorizing faith, shutting down opposition. Amen? Tell your neighbor, opposition. Now, I don't know if you have ever been opposed by anything. And I'm telling you that in this world, you'll be opposed. We live in a world full of opposition. We live in a world full of hindrances. We live in a world full of limitations. These are what we call oppositions. We live in a world full of fear. Sin is an opposition. And sin came right in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Sin is an opposition. But let me tell you this, sin is not an overcomer. Hallelujah. You are an overcomer. It is good for you to remember this. You, as a believer, you are not a sinner saved by grace. Now, let me say that again, because some of you sometimes when you give testimonies, you come and with humility and humbleness, say, I, uh, I thank God that I'm a sinner saved by grace. The reason why you say that is you do not know the amazing transformation that took place. Hallelujah. You're no longer a sinner. You are now a saint. Hallelujah. You're a saint. Something changed. There was a total transformation. Your spirit became new. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. Of course, the reason why you say that is because you don't understand that we are made in three parts. Tell your neighbor three parts. You are a spirit, having a mind, living in a body. Your spirit has been saved. Your mind is being saved. Your body will be saved. Hallelujah. So let me say that again. Your spirit, when the moment you tell Jesus to come into your life, your spirit is transformed. In fact, I wish God would give you eyes to see yourself in the spirit. You would be seriously metametering the way I've been talking to you. You will not even believe who you are. In your spirit, you are so different. Now, the reason why you get challenges is because it is your mind that is still being saved. It has not been saved. It is being saved. It is being changed. Your body, which sometimes gives you many problems, don't worry. One day, your body will be totally changed. Hallelujah. So, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are in three parts. Now, in those three parts, which one is really you? Huh? Let me ask again. Which one is really you? Spirit. So we have many spirits looking at me. <laughs> we have many spirits looking at me. But for you to function on earth, your spirit needs a soul. It needs a mind. That's, how, that's why you're able to think. That you're able to reason. That's why you're able to have emotions. You have, you, have, you have a reasoning. That's why God says, come, let us reason. Together, says the Lord. God has given you an ability to reason, ability to understand, ability to imagine. That is part of your soul. Your body, which is your encasing, which is around you, which is, that is, that is where you live. And some of your houses, the temples you live in, you know, you leave this. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Temple. So don't think your body is you. Your body is where you live. And some of you live in tall buildings. Some of you live in short buildings. Some of you live in fat buildings. But it is your building. 
Thank you, Jesus. When I say fat, I mean faithful, available, and teachable. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> F-A-T. <laughs> so don't feel condemned and say, oh, Pastor, I said, manini. It's your body, body, body. That's why when you die, you come out of your body. When you're, when you're brought here for a funeral service, it is your body that is here. You yourself, you are not here. Hallelujah. You're not here. You left. If you were saved, you left and went to heaven. If you're not saved, you left and went to hell. And even when you say rest in peace, there is no resting in peace. You went to hell. <laughs> I'm serious. That's why we are talking about the spirit that the you inside must be saved. Hallelujah. But your mind has challenges. And that's what we want. we want to talk about authorizing faith. Your mind needs to be transformed on a daily basis. So you don't say, I am a sinner saved by grace. You are actually a saint. Hallelujah. In fact, let me give you this verse. First John chapter 3, verse 1 says this. First John 3, verse 1. It says this. It says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called who? Children of God. And then he adds this, and remember, look at those exclamation marks. He says, it is amazing that God has lavished his love for us, you know, that we should be called children of God. And then it says, and that is what we are in reality. Your mind keeps disputing that fact. Because of the limitations and the challenges and the oppositions you face. But you really are a child of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. And so you can imagine when Jesus was on this earth, they didn't know that the creator of the universe was walking among them. They didn't know. They saw his body. And so they opposed him. They fought with him. All kinds of things. And let me tell you this. God has given you faith that rises from your spirit but needs your mind to connect so that you can walk in this world victoriously. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says this. So let me read that for you. 1 John 5. Let me start from verse 1. Verse 1 of that chapter says this. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of, of God. And everyone who loves the Father Loves his child as well. Verse 2. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God. To keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone. Everyone. That includes all of you. Everyone. For everyone born of God does what? Overcomes the world. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am an overcomer. Now, listen, even if you have not overcome anything last week, by status, you are an overcomer. He says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. And then he says, this is the victory that has overcome the world. Even what? Even our faith. But you see, we live in a world full of opposition. And like I was saying earlier, sin is one of those things that you have to deal with. And fight with. Temptation comes. And we wrestle with those kinds of things. But let me tell you this. Temptation is not a sin. Hallelujah. Temptation is not a sin. Let me read for you. 1 Corinthians 10.13. So we are just, we are just introducing this, this issue to you today. It says, No temptation has overtaken you. Except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. In other words, when temptation comes, God knows what you can bear, what you can handle. Hallelujah. He knows what you can handle. There are some things some of us cannot handle. Hello? You know, some of us go to places and we know that we are placing ourselves in the hands of temptation and we know we cannot handle it. You know, some of us may go into a bar 
and sit in the bar. People, everybody is drinking. People are shouting. There is a disco, and you are sitting there drinking Sprite. Hello, you are drinking Sprite and say, Jehovah God, I'm, a, I'm a, an overcomer. Kijana toshkwa nini Sprite niango. Hallelujah. They bring you Sprite. You're drinking Sprite. People are drinking. One of your friends says, Ah, Ambrose, you are here. Yeah, I'm here. You are drinking Sprite. Yeah, I'm drinking Sprite. Ah, bana. Watch out on mobile Sprite. Can I add you something? You know, there's something called Guinness for power. Can you just... <laughs> it used to be there a long time ago. You know, and I say, ah, 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 ah. I'll pass. And so... People are running around. I say, ah, this is Ambrose. Man, I used to be a friend of mine, but these days he loves Jesus Christ. By the way, Ambrose, can you sing for us a Christian song? <laughs> I, I'm in an environment that I'm being challenged. Are we together? Temptation is coming my way left and right. And I'm sitting there saying, Jehovah God, I'm a winner. I'm an overcomer. Hallelujah. No weapon that is fashioned against me will prosper. But you see, I'm in an environment <clears throat> that is challenged. Before I know it, if I don't go home quickly, <laughs> hello, I'll find myself in another world singing songs I'm not supposed to sing. <laughs> Buffalo soldier, ingine <laughs> tafadali. Hallelujah. Now I'll be younger, I'll be younger, what way them be good. You see, I am saved, but my mind, which is being saved, has, has been brought into an environment I cannot handle it. Are we together? Cannot handle it. In fact, it reminds me, when I just got saved, I, I, I used to love music. I used to love listening to Congolese music. I used to listen to those things. But I'm being saved. Tell your neighbor, Ambrose is being saved. <laughs> I used to listen to that music because my father had all kinds of records. Eh? Franco, uh, Rocheru, people who have died, you don't know them. Hello? And I, when I got saved, I'm telling you, I got born again. I was saved. I was 16. Saved. My friends wondered, how, can, how, how could Ambrose get saved? I was the only one saved in that place. All my friends but, ah, were saved. And I would tell them, me, I'm not going to discourse anymore. I'm not going to these places. No temptation has overtaken me. That is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let me be tempted beyond my strength. He will open a door of escape. Oh, I'm telling you. And for sure, I'm saved. Then one day, a band came from Tanzania. A band that I really liked to listen to. And they were coming to our, where we were staying. It's, right now it's called Railway Training Institute. They came and they were ha having that in that hall. And my friend said, Ambrose, are you coming? I said, no, 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 I'm not coming. I'm saved. Delivered, sanctified, going to heaven. They said, Sir Ambrose, we will see you another day. So I went home that night and I was not going anywhere. Midnight, I could hear the things playing. I'm sleeping. And the guy who had come, um, he used to be, he's late now. Barak. Barak Mishé. One of the songs he used to sing is Tina, 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 those kinds of things. Tell your neighbor, Ambrose has been delivered. <laughs> so, I'm in, the, I'm in my bedroom sleeping, but guess what? I really set myself up. Because when I went to sleep, I slept with all my clothes on. <laughs> Apart from my shoes. Midnight, my father is sleeping, everybody is sleeping. Past midnight, the doors would be opened, now people would go in free. Let me tell you this, I could not help it. I would turn, I would turn, I turned, I turned, 
and somewhere in the night around one o'clock, I woke up. I told God, let me put on these shoes. I just put on the shoes. I said, God, I'm going to that place, but I'm going to represent you in Jesus' name. You know, and I went there. I, I found myself there. Things are hot. People are moving. Bah, things, hey, but, but I'm at the door. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm observing the situation. I'm just checking the spiritual atmosphere around this place. Bringing down strongholds and bringing down principalities. I'm at the door. Everybody's going in free. Before I knew it, I was inside right in front. <laughs> listening to the bass going. And slowly, no, rumba. Rumba, you just start moving pole pole. You just move pole pole. <laughs> I was in the mix. One of my friends said, but Ambrose, you're here. I said, yes. He said, but you're saved. I said, I'm just praying in the midst of this situation. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what happened to me next. But let me tell you this. God found a way for me to get out. So let me read that verse for you one more time. I don't know why today I'm talking about this issue. But I want to tell you the Bible. Let me read you that verse. No temptation has done what? Has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Then the next verse says, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, because you will be, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Let me tell you the way out that came for me. And God had to provide it. I saw a lady there that I had been timing for some time. <laughs> sitting in the, in, the, in the, she was sitting, she was not dancing. So I went to her. People are just everywhere moving. People are just moving. So I also moved towards her. Bah, 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 bah. Now I'm just moving and just I'm moving, you know, and she's looking at me. And you know you're 16. You don't know how to, to introduce yourself. And the best possible way, I looked at the lady I met and I said, dear sister, may I dance with you? You know, has, have you ever found somebody who, who, who not only looked at you, looked through you? <laughs> this lady looked through me and gave me a look of... At, at, at what? I looked around to find out if anybody had seen what had just happened. <laughs> but nobody had seen it. I felt so languid. Languid! We, what, what is language in English? Huh? Yes, ignored. I was so upset. Kumbe, that was my way of escape. Let me tell you this. I walked out of that place crying. Literally. I've been languid. Yani ignored. I went home, but as I was going home crying and saying, God, how could she do that? Tomorrow if I meet her, I will nyonga her. I'm telling you. I was feeling bad. But let me tell you this. That was my day of escape. That was my opportunity. God just had to make that situation happen. Because God knew I would not be able to endure. And my desire from that day left. Completely. And God gave me victory in that particular area. Now, many of you have different kinds of situations. Some of you are wondering, Pani Ambrose, what, is, what was so big about that situation? Because all of us have different kinds of opposition. And the, the devil knows which opposition is going to bring you down. And so, today we are talking about authorizing faith, shutting down opposition. Because God will give you the victory. Hallelujah. He'll give you the victory. And so there's sin, fear, and God keeps telling us, fear not, for I'm what? I'm with you. He said, do not be dismayed. I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I'll uphold you with my victorious right hand. Let me tell, say this. For some of us, opposition is failure. Some of us are so scared to fail. We don't, when, when it comes to, to that, we get Totally a mess. Some of us have failed so often 
that we have even stopped fighting the failure. But you know, some of us opposition is success. Some of us cannot handle success. And success has become such a hindrance in our lives. Some of us, our positions are like giants, like mountains. Some of us, it is threats, being threatened by situations and circumstances, hardships. Let me read you this verse. Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 31, it says this. This is a good verse for each one of us. It says this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Tell your neighbor, God is for me. Hallelujah. God is for me. Now look at the next verse because it tells us about the oppositions that come our way. It says, he who did not spare his own son. But gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Look at the next verse. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Then it gives us the oppositions. Shall trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, <clears throat> or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Look at verse 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who did what? Who loved us? Then look at verse 38. He, gi he gives you another list of opposition. He says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let me tell you this. We have the upper hand. Let me read this verse in the Amplified Version. John chapter 16, verse 32 and 33. Let me read this and just hear what Jesus is saying. The Bible says this. John chapter 16. It says this. Jesus answered them. Do you now at last believe? Take careful notice, an hour is coming and has arrived when you will be scattered each of, to his own home, leaving me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world, you have tribulation. Are you listening to me? In the world, you'll have this trouble. You have tribulation and distress and suffering. And then he says, but be what? Be courageous. Keep going. Be confident. Be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. Hallelujah. He has overcome the world. And so your faith can work. Don't be afraid of opposition. Don't be afraid of sin. Don't be afraid of fear. Don't be afraid of scarcity. I'm telling you, God has given you authorizing faith. And that's why I want to share now three situations where your faith can authorize victory every day. I want to talk about three areas in a very short moment. I want to talk about a man under authority, a woman highly favored, a church spiritually mandated, a man under authority, a woman highly favored, a church spiritually mandated. Let me talk about a man under authority. God has given us faith. 
that authorizes us to do many things. And this is an example of this man I want to share with you. <coughs> the book of Matthew, chapter 8, from verse 5. There's a man that Jesus met. Let me read a bit about him. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do, not ha I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. <clears throat> I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said, now I want you to listen to this. He was amazed and said to those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with what? Such great faith. You know, Jesus saw faith in this man. Now this man is not born again, but this man had understood a principle that is very important when you are handling authority. Hallelujah. And I want you to know, your faith will have difficulties authorizing situations if that faith is not positioned. Tell your neighbor, your faith needs to be positioned. I want you to know that <clears throat> from January, we have been teaching you about faith so that your faith will find a position. So that when you, are, you start dealing with mountains, start dealing with opposition, you are positioned. Hallelujah. And this man said something that was interesting. He says, I am a man under authority. I think this man had listened to Jesus and listened to Jesus and said, this Jesus is not just the son of the carpenter. And let me tell you this. Many people who came and saw Jesus as the son of Joseph, son of a carpenter, those people went home without a miracle. Because they could not exercise their faith. Because their faith was not positioned. And I want you to know that when your faith is positioned, you begin to become a person of authority. A person who is able to authorize something and it is done. But he said something that was very key. I am a man under authority. Hallelujah. And I believe one of the challenges we have in our, in our society today is people do not understand authority. People do not honor authority. People do not function under authority. And yet they expect the highest authority to work for them. Hello? A centurion is a man who has a hundred soldiers under him. He knows how to exercise authority. His word can bring life. His word can bring death. And so this man finds a servant in the house in terrible pain. And with all his status, he cannot do anything. He realizes <clears throat> that where sickness is concerned, he is not authorized to do anything. Hello? And so he looks for a person who has that kind of authority which he doesn't have. And so he finds Jesus and he says, Jesus, please come to my place. My servant is terribly sick and unwell. And Jesus said, okay, let us go. And the man says, hey, you don't have to come. Authority doesn't have to come somewhere. Authority just has to be positioned. Tell yourself, position. I'm a man under authority. I'm a man under authority. Now you need to understand that. Huh? When you talk about a man under authority. Let me get some of these pastors here today. Pastor Riggs and Pastor Kiniti, since you are very close here, <laughs> Let me, let me deal with you guys, okay? Just to talk about this thing under authority. Now, I want you to stay right there and you need to stay right where you are. Now, you see, the centurion is there. He's handling a situation which he cannot deal with. And even though he's a person with authority, this situation is too much for him. So he looks for another man 
with that kind of authority. So turn, and he finds Jesus, and he says, Jesus, you come handle my situation. Jesus is smiling, and Jesus is saying, this situation can be handled. You know, I have no problem. Uh, but you see, <laughs> where are you going? Oh, you're, you're, you're coming under authority. Okay. All right. So he's a man under authority. So stay there. Just come down, Kidogo. But you see, Jesus is also a man under authority. Uh, so we want, we want now God the Father to be up there. Who, who among those people do you think is God the Father? Okay, JJ, stand up there. Okay. Tell your neighbor, authority flows. Okay. So we have, turn around uh, Pastor Riggs. So Riggs is the centurion. He has these soldiers he deals with. He sends them, they go. He calls them, they come back. He knows how to handle that authority. But one day he meets a situation he cannot deal with. He doesn't have faith to deal with that. He turns to Jesus. Jesus, who is also a man under authority. That Jesus one day said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when Jesus was sent, he was sent as a man under authority. He comes under delegated authority. He finds a soldier with authority, dealing with a situation he cannot handle. But the important thing is that this centurion positioned himself under that authority. And when he positioned himself under that authority, now the situation in his house could be changed. And Jesus said, I have never seen such great faith in Israel. Now, Pastor Riggs, turn, turn look at me. Now, let me ask you, if Jesus came to Paki, would he say, I have not found any faith like that in Paki? Ladies and gentlemen, having faith is not walking around with a spiritual attitude. Hello? It is not walking around with a holy attitude. It is not looking at, down at people as if you are the holiest and they are not. Authority is not emotional. It is not how loud you pray. That's not authority. Let me tell you this. It is just positioning yourself under a greater authority. Hallelujah. And when he did that, Jesus, because the man told him what, how he handles his authority. He handles his authority by speaking words. He says, I tell this soldier, come, and they come. You soldier, go, go. What he was telling Jesus, activate your faith by speaking a word. And Jesus said, go, your servant is well. Let me read those verses while we are still here. Uh, in, in Matthew chapter 8. Chapter eight. All right? Around verse 8. So pick it from there. Around verse 8. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say what? <clears throat> just say the word. And my servant will be healed. He, he was absolutely sure that that word would bring healing. Look at the next verse. For I am myself, I'm a man under authority. With soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, he goes. And that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Keep going. Verse 11. I said to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done. Just as you believed it would be done. In other words, you go, the way you have positioned yourself in that faith, with that position, I give you authorizing faith. And the Bible says, and his servant was healed after three weeks. He was healed at that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. There is no opposition you cannot handle. Whether there are hardships, just position yourself. 
Let your faith be positioned. And you know, the centurion positioned himself under Jesus, but let me tell you this, Jesus is not here, but his word is here. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing what? The word of God. Position yourself under the word. But if you live your life every day, completely going against this word, Every day, God gives you a promise and says, ah, that is not for me. You look at another word, ah, these things were written by men. Let me tell you this, that day you are in trouble. And you say, Jehovah God, ah, intervene, intervene. God says, you are not a man under authority. You are not a woman under authority. You have not learned authority. And so how do you expect me to just show up because you call me to engage with you? Let me tell you this. Learn to be a person under authority. Pastor Ambrose is a man under authority. Jesus Christ himself called me into the ministry. Hallelujah. The deacons of this church function because they are men under authority. Now you ask, them, you ask me, who gave them that authority? In whose authority do they function at Parklands Baptist Church? I'm asking you, the deacons of this church, they function under whose authority in this church? Think about it. Think. We're in church. Under whose authority? In fact, let me get one of those deacons. The deacons, one of those deacons come. Because you need to understand this issue of authority. Just come. In fact, all you three deacons show up, come here. Now, these deacons are ordained deacons. Hello? They are ordained deacons. They are men under authority. Whose authority? Let me ask you, for example, if these three deacons went to St. Mark's Anglican Church here, would they function as deacons in that church? Why? But you see, they are deacons under God's authority, which means wherever they go, they will function as deacons. True? The reason why they cannot function at St. Mark's is because the authority in St. Mark's did not make them deacons. Are, you, are we together? It is the authority in Parklands Baptist Church under the senior pastor Ambrose Alan Nyangao, the ambassador. <laughs> Just trying to teach you something. They function under my authority. Are you listening to me? And wherever they go, they go in my name. Are you listening to me? It's called authority. If they don't understand that authority, one day when they're looking for God's authority, they cannot say like the centurion, I'm a man and authority. God will not listen to them because they are not positioned in that authority. Are we together? The reason why there are deacons in Parklands Baptist Church is because there's a day Pastor Ambrose ordained them as deacons. And so they function under that authority. But as they function under that authority, at their personal level as believers, they are accountable to God who saved them. Ambrose did not save them. So I cannot authorize them to go to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Only God has that mandate because God is their personal savior. Ambrose is not their savior. So you see, there are levels of authority. And so whether they are ushers in this service, whether they are uh, women leaders, men leaders, because they function under the umbrella of Parklands Baptist Church, they are under the authority of the senior pastor. Are you, are you nitaring this? And that is why I also find myself very challenged because I know if I exercise my authority in a bad way, I am accountable to Jesus Christ who will show up 
and judge me for the way I acted. And that is why I have to carry myself with humility and humbleness, but still have authority. Hallelujah. Still have authority. I'm a man under authority. If you don't understand that, then you cannot release your faith in certain areas. The centurion could not release his faith in this sickness because he could not handle that sickness. Only Jesus had authority. Let me read this verse very quickly for us. The book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus opens the Bible and he gives his authority on the things that he's in charge of. The Bible says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus has that mandate. And when we come under that mandate, when we come under that position, then his power now flows through each one of us and it affects the will of God in heaven. Hallelujah. I'm a man under authority. Ambrose is under authority from, from God. The deacons are under authority from God, but they have their authorizing officer. Who is who? It's Pastor Ambrose. Are you, are you listening to me? Now, I may be saying it in a light way, and I hope the deacons understand what I'm saying, and even the pastors. All the pastors here at Parklands Baptist Church are under whose authority? Under Pastor Ambrose's authority. How they behave themselves out there is a reflection on me. When they shine, I shine. Hallelujah. When they blunder, I blunder. If they shine and I shine, therefore I must make them shine. I must make these deacons shine. I must pray for them. I must lift them up. I must encourage them because I am a man under authority. When I do that, then I can handle the sicknesses, the challenges that are in their lives because authority flows from Jesus through me to them going and going and going. Are you hearing this? But if somebody is in this congregation and says, Ah, what channel Ambrose, Ambrose ni nani? And then pretty soon you come back and says, Pastor, can you do my wedding? How can I do that? You are a woman not under authority. You are a man who is not under authority. And let me tell you, the kingdom of God has those positions. And if faith will flow, it flows through authority. Hallelujah. So deacons, shine. Pastors, shine. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you. Now, you guys still stay there. <laughs> the amazing thing about Jesus even though he was a person of authority he humbled himself just come down now he humbled, just Rick stay where you are he humbled himself more than this man come down humbled himself became a man stand right there took that authority but also humbled himself even lower and he died and went lower down into hell. And because of submitting to the Father in that fashion, God exalted him. He rose again up to that man, rose again and ascended and keep ascending and stay at the right hand of God the Father. At that level of authority, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And then the amazing thing is that this man, when he gave his life to Jesus Christ, the Lord made him sit in the heavenly places. Sit in the heavenly places. <laughs> Sit in the heavenly places. <laughs> 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 
with Christ Jesus. That's where you are. That's where you are. Hallelujah. That's where you are. That's where Stephen, when he was being stoned by this opposition, he was stoned, being beaten. Then he says, his eyes were open and he says, I see Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And Jesus is saying, I salute you, Stephen. Come up here. And as the stones were beating him, he left his body on earth and he went to the heavenly places. And he went and just went and just went and kept going. Paul of Tarsus, who was authorized to kill him, was still standing there and killing him, but he had left. He had left. And he came to where the father was. I'm telling you, there's no opposition, neither death, no life, no angels, no principalities, no powers. He left. When he came to where the father and the son is, hallelujah, he said, Father, that man called Saul, I have authorizing faith. Turn him around. Let him take my place. And the father said, so be it. And this man who was full of opposition, he didn't know what has, had been authorized in heaven. And even though he was walking around as if nothing had happened, something had changed. On his way to Damascus, something slapped him. He fell on the ground. Jesus appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He says, who are you? I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. He says, come on, stand up, go to, the, to, to, to Damascus, and Ananias will tell you what to do. You have no idea that when you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places and you begin to authorize Things changed on earth. That's why Pastor Ambrose, when he's praying, he prays <clears throat> and things begin to change in your life. Situations and circumstances change because I am releasing, authorizing faith and things are happening. Let me tell you this. You are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. That's where you are spiritually, even though physically you're still here. Have you received this word? Then give God a big hand. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Let's appreciate them. I stayed on that point for quite some time because I needed to pass that point across, the point of authority. But I want to go very quickly and talk about Mary and then we tie this up. That's the second point that I want to give to you. Secondly, authorizing faith, a woman highly favored. And I want to stay there, talk about this woman who was highly favored. And I want to tell you this, when you are highly favored, your faith authorizes things and they begin to happen. You're highly favored. And I like that because the angel came to Mary. By the way, let me tell you this, the story of Mary is about God bringing new things on the planet new ideas on the planet. And he is looking for a man, he's looking for a woman who will be able to say, yes, let it be unto me according to your word. That's what happened to Mary. But let me read that story briefly and tell you about this woman who was highly favored. Starting with verse 28, Luke 128, the angel went to her and said, greetings, you are, now he didn't say you look highly favored. He said you, you are. Highly favored. And then he said, the Lord is with you. Just at the fact the Lord is with you, you become highly favored. I'm telling you. The fact that Jesus stands by your side, your value goes up immediately. You know very well how our country is. Anytime you put a highway around a certain area, just because the way is there, the land next to that highway appreciates tremendously. And by the way, Jesus is the way. And where he passes, everybody there appreciates in value. Tell your neighbor you're highly favored. Your value has appreciated tremendously. 
And Mary, the moment God, the angel said to Mary, you're highly favored. The Lord is with you. I'm telling you, her value changed. Listen to the next word that he started talking. Because he wanted to establish Mary's faith, which was not there, but suddenly it came. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Ladies and gentlemen, you're highly favored. I'm saying you're highly favored. I'm saying you're highly favored. And because you are, walk like people who are highly favored. Don't let fear push you down. Don't let threats cause you to run under the table. You are highly favored. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. And now see how he begins to declare the word of God to her. Because he wanted to build her up. Look at the next verse. He says, you will conceive. God, he's not saying one of these days you are. He says, you will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. Look at the next verse. And then he says, this Jesus will be great. He'll be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary says, hey, how will this be? She was not doubting. She was saying, this is too good to be, to be true. Tell me more. Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin, you know, since I have these oppositions, how will this be? Eh? I have fear. How will this be? <coughs> You've told me to build a university, but I don't have money. How will this be? How will this be? How will this be? We all say that. But it is a statement of saying, tell me more. Because I want to be that instrument. Work it through me. Let it happen through me. And some of you have dreams. Some of you have visions. And every time you look at them, you look at them and then ask again, how will this be? Because what I have does not match what God wants to do. But let me tell you this. The Bible says, the angel answered. Let me now give you that, that answer. The angel answered and said, the Holy Spirit will come on you. So how will this be? How will this dream come to pass? You just stay positioned. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you so that the Holy One to be born, what will, the product that will come out of you will be of God. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. You have authorizing faith. And the angel is building her up, building her up, building her up, and telling her things she has never heard. But because she was also wondering, how will this be? Now look at the next verse. God gives, gives a, a, a small testimony. He says, even Elizabeth. Uh, you think this is hard? Now listen. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said, people said, people said, I'm telling you something. That people have been saying that you, they say, they say, they say, and you have believed what they say. They said, she who was said to be unable to conceive, currently, she is in her sixth month. You know, some of you are sitting here, what you don't know is that you're pregnant, but you don't know. <laughs> don't look at each other, I'm saying, I'm talking to you now. <laughs> Her husband is looking at the wife, Nikweli. Now, Janiambia. I'm saying you're pregnant with a miracle of God. You didn't know, but the problems you have, God has given you the solution. The solution is inside you. They said you could not make it. They said you could not come through. They said, they said, but here comes the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and he's giving you his word and he has said it. He will do it. He'll perform it. It will happen. He'll make it happen. He'll make it happen. They said, forget what they said. God is saying something now. I'm telling you. Mary, Elizabeth, your relative, is in her sixth month. And then he added by saying the next verse 37. He said this. For no word from God. 
We never fail. Let me read it in the Amplified version quickly. Amplified says this. Amplified says, For with God, nothing is or ever shall be impossible. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm carrying a miracle. miracle. Tell your neighbor, I've conceived. conceived. I have a miracle. miracle. Hallelujah. Then listen to what Mary said. Mary said, if that's what God is saying, look at what she said. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Let me read that in the Amplified Version. Amplified says this. Same verse. Then Mary said, Behold, I'm the Lord's servant. I'm the servant of the Lord. May it be done. May it be done. May it be done. May it be done. You should be saying that. May it be done. To me. To me. To me. You know, some of you are always passing blessings. You're saying, I think that blessing is for you. That blessing is for you. You never turn back and say, He's talking to me. He's talking to me. Let it be unto me according to your word. And the angel did what? The angel left her. But let me show you something very quickly. Look at the next verse. The next verse says this. Now at this time Mary arose and hurried to the hill country to the city of Judah in Judea. And she entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, her baby leaped in her womb. Me, I don't know what happened. But the baby is from assaulted in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by him. And listen to what she said. And she exclaimed loudly, Blessed, worthy to be praised are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Now remember, Elizabeth has not seen Mary. Mary just entered. She didn't know that she had an encounter with an angel. So Mary, does, Elizabeth doesn't know. But under the power of the Holy Spirit, she's saying these things. And how, go back again, verse 43. <clears throat> verse 40, 42, sorry. And she exclaimed loudly, Blessed are worthy to be praised are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Verse 43. It says, And how has it happened, and how has it happened to me that the mother, Mary has not even She has just arrived that the mother of my Lord would come to me. Look at verse 44. For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed, spiritually fortunate and favored by God is she who believed and confidently trusted that there would be a fulfillment of the things that were spoken to her by the angel sent from the Lord. This woman believed. I'm talking to women here now. And I'm saying, believe. I'm talking to men and I'm saying, believe. Let it be unto me according to your word. She gave authorization and heaven came through. Tell your neighbor, be positioned. Tell your neighbor, position your faith. And tell your neighbor, establish your faith. Hallelujah. Number three, I'll talk about it another day. So stand on your feet. Give your neighbor a high five. Hallelujah. Uh, Please give them a smile also. Tell them I'm, I'm giving you an authorized smile. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. time. I believe something has happened in somebody's spirit. Something has entered into your spirit. Take it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Your breakthrough is coming this week. I'm talking about it. I'm authorizing it now in Jesus' name. I'm saying your territories are being expanded right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I'm declaring that you are highly favored. 
it is established. I'm talking to favored people. Tell your neighbor, I'm highly favored. Even though you don't believe it. I know you believe it. <laughs> One more time, tell them I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored. Because the Lord is with me. The Lord is me. I'm, going I'm going places. Devil, move aside. Devil move aside. I'm coming through. I'm, coming through. I'm, a, child I'm a child of God. I'm seated with Christ. I'm seated in the heavenly places. Yes. I am a person under authority. I'm highly favored. I'm coming through. There is no opposition that will stop me. No hindrance that will hinder me. No oppression that will oppress me. For I have risen. I have ascended. I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Where I sit, I now authorize in Jesus' name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now you better give God a big hand and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on somebody, give God a big hand. Glory. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, come on. Come on, somebody. Somebody. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are so excited because chains are broken. Chains are broken. Those hindrances, oh God, those chains, those limitations, sin, fear, scarcity, failure, mountains, threats, hardships are moving aside. Lord, we have a great inheritance. We have been raised. We are seated with Christ. We are more than conquerors. And so, Father, this afternoon, I authorize victory in the lives of your people in the name of Jesus. I command sicknesses to be healed in Jesus' name. I'm talking to those mountains and telling mountains, move aside in the name of Jesus and be cast into the sea. I'm releasing God's favor into your life in Jesus' name. I'm releasing breakthroughs in Jesus' name. I'm declaring that in the next three days, signs and wonders will happen in your life. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. I declare to you, fear not, for God is with you. Like Mary, you may be asking, how will this be? But this pastor is saying the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Let there be light. Your darkness will go. Let there be provision. Your poverty will go. Let there be breakthrough. Divine ideas will come your way. Let there be strength to overcome temptation. You may have fallen, but today I'm saying arise. Stand back on your feet. Run the race that is set before you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your life. Father, these are your people. As they go out of this church today, they have been given authority to shine, authority to do good. May they be people under authority, the authority of your word, the authority of your will, the authority of your purposes. May they live a life that is of the Lord. As you have said, we are children of God. And that's what we are. We have a new identity. We are not sinners saved by grace. We are saints 
of the living God. My master, this month I declare victory for every person who is listening to me. Those in the pavilion, I speak victory to you in Jesus' name. Those in this sanctuary, I speak victory to you now in Jesus' name. Victory to your children. Victory in your business. Victory at the marketplace. Victory when you come in. Victory when you go out. Yes, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Dear Father, as we enter this week, we have a number of conferences happening, quite a number of meetings happening. Our men's week is coming this week. Dear Lord, draw all men to come. These couple of days will be amazing days. <clears throat> Father, we thank you. Again, like we prayed for our children who are going to Norway, go before them in a mighty way. Dear Father, I worship you. I bless you. Lord, there's something that has been deposited in the spirits of your people today. Please, we seal and we secure it. The devil will not steal it. I declare to you that as you go out of this sanctuary this afternoon, that miracles are waiting for you. Great opportunities are coming your way. Those that had been shut for so long, this week, we have declared them open. We have declared them open. Yes, we are saying they are open. In the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. And so, I ask you, like Mary, I want you to say, Lord, I'm your servant. Let it be unto me according to your word. I have believed that what you say will be fulfilled in my life. So, Father, I give you permission to work in my life, your will and your purpose, and that this week, you will shine in me and through me to the glory of your name. By next week, in fact, next week, that is next Sunday, I'm coming back with a testimony. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, give, a, give, give a high five to two, three people as I prepare to bless you. Give them, give them a smile. Yeah, even for that person who is ignoring you, give, give them a high five. Tell them you are special. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's really appreciate this energetic team here. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's appreciate them. Amen. Now, Susan, Pastor Susan is going to Norway this coming week. And um, I'm giving them a hundred of this. Cop of this. I'm sponsoring them a hundred of them. I'd like to ask if there are two people who can sponsor another hundred. Another hundred, we give them 300 copies of this. Please, let Pastor Riggs or Pastor Kiniti know a hundred of this. And if you don't have a copy of this card, please get yourself one. By the way, ask your neighbor, do you have that card? It's called the let there be card. Let there be. Let there be. Tell your neighbor, let there be victory. Let there be victory. Let there be light. Let there be. So we are sending about 300 copies to Norway. And if you want to be part of it, let these pastors know. Amen. Are you glad you came? I'm glad I came. Hallelujah. Let's give God one more big hand. Bless him. Amen. Amen. By the way, do we have somebody here who is 65 years old? 65. 65. Do I have a 65? Come, I want to give you this card. Another 65. 
65. Mama, God bless you. Glad you came. Amen. You know you are older than me. Yeah. You are blessed. Karibu sana. Amen. 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 Hakuna mwingine? 65. Oh, then why don't we flip it? 56. Anybody is 56? 56. God bless you. I, I'll give you two. Just wait. I'll give you another one. Yeah. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and who is um, 18? 80. There is somebody 80. Where is 80? They are getting there. Anyway, get a copy. Amen? Get a copy. Mama Susan, at least you need a copy. This is Susan's mother, Pastor Susan's mother. God bless you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Amen. Lift up your hands as I bless you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for today. This service has been amazing. There's been an anointing that is flowing, moving in our lives. And the chains have broken. The chains have broken. Now, Father, as we go out free, the Bible says, They that, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, Father, go with your people. May they be testimonies wherever they go. May they, may, may they shine. May they be victors. May they be overcomers. May they learn to be men and women under authority. May they be highly favored because they are. May there be no opposition that will stop their breakthrough. Father, because this servant of yours has decreed it, it shall be so. It shall be so. And so may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord bless you when you come in. May the Lord bless you when you go out. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the countryside. You're blessed to become a blessing. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a big hand. Amen. 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 Our visitors, we have a cup of tea. And please, take a cup of tea on a cold day like this. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom.